Merry Christmas Eve, everybody, and welcome to It's Gorgomatic on this Friday, December 24th, Christmas Eve, along with the man, the myth, the legend, handicapper extraordinaire Kevin Gord. We are once again joined by Minnesota State Senator Carla Bigham. We said we had the open door policy and she jumped right through it <laughs> right away. Good morning to both of you. Good morning. Good morning. She's got a quiche in the oven and <laughs> yep. uh, she's yeah. ready for some football. That's right. That's right. What a great weekend besides family uh, and, and spending time with loved ones. You got football and a lot of it, whether it's mm. pro or college. Let's do this. Yeah, it's gonna be fun. We yeah. lost our Hawaii Bowl. I know. It's a bummer. It's one of my favorite bowls because it's on late at night. You get all that, you know, <laughs> whatever food you're going to gobble up, you get all the presents opened up, you relax, you're ready for that late night fix. And uh, they took it away. Too many guys with COVID on Hawaii. Yeah. Well, the doubleheader at the McNiff household last night while the football game was going on was the doubleheader of Home Alone, the original. Oh, yeah. And and, uh, and Die Hard. There you go. Which is, <laughs> which is a Christmas movie for anybody out there that's wondering. Yeah. It is a Christmas is. movie, um, and it's one of my favorites. I, I Bruce Willis at his very best, at the peak of Bruce Willis in that movie. Correct. Well, really established him from going from moonlighting to the big screen. Yeah. But the late Alan Rickman, who, of course, oh. played uh, Professor Snape, but he's so good in the way he delivers his lines are just, he's fabulous. Well, and what Hans people Gruber. might forget, uh, he was the villain in Hans Gruber. He also played a significant role in another fantastic Christmas movie named Love Actually and completely different side of, of him as an actor. Uh, he's, he's terrific. He was great in both, but especially in Die Hard. I mean, that, that scene at the very end when he gets pushed out, I mean, he's to the very end, he's trying to take Bruce Willis out. It's uh it's high drama. It's uh, it's got that Christmas feel to it. It's, it's big fun. Are you guys familiar with the television show, the movies that made us? Oh yeah, I love it. CNN, it's fantastic. It's 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 the, it's the it's the gift that keeps on giving. What they do is they they go behind the scenes of these major movies and they give you the backstory to oh. all of them. And that's what's so great about the knowing that last scene where where Hans is dangling out the window mm -hmm. was when they were filming that they didn't tell him when they were going to drop him. So the look oh. you see at the look you see on his face, genuine. That's because, fantastic. Yes. Wow. Classic. So it's a timing thing. You get if you give him the heads up, then he knows it's coming. And that look of you know complete surprise and terror is authentic. Oh, That's good right. for them. Yeah. Good for them. Yes. Fabulous, fabulous movie. So so you guys are gonna tell me about the game last night because I was watching texts and, and going along following along that way, but I, I was not <laughs> watching the game. I've seen the highlights only since we did have a we've got a ton to get through today, so we're gonna move on it. Um, Gorgomatic has loaded you up. He is stuffing your stockings today. We've got, okay, I came up with a different way. Yesterday, you called it the Smorgasgorg. Huh. It could also be called the Gorgus Board. <laughs> <laughs> Too much Gorg. Too much. Never <laughs> enough. Never enough. Nine. The... Go ahead. No, nine NFL game plays and then stuff your stockings with four prop plays to boot. You were going to say. I watched the first half last night, and honestly, because I was under the weather, I, I decided to to go to bed early and then put the radio broadcast in my ear as I fell asleep. And, you know, when I went to bed, San Francisco was in complete control of the football game. And from everything I can garner from the radio broadcast and in reading some stuff on Twitter this morning, Jimmy Carapolo went colorblind at some point, oh. and all of a sudden started throwing the ball to Tennessee. And honestly, watching the first half, it was exactly what we talked about. San Francisco... Yes built a lead, was the better team, had control. But when yeah. you start to turn the ball over and two interceptions at critical times in that game, and yeah. all of a sudden you give a good coach like Vrabel, who we talked about, just a little sliver, and Tennessee found a way. And all of a sudden yeah. now Frisco's playing catch-up. They come all the way back at the end. They tie it up, but they left too much time for Tannehill. Yeah, and A.J. Brown had a game. He had something to mm. prove. Um, and – I didn't, I mean, and I'm I'm not a pro like Gorgomatic, but I would not have called that one um, just because of everything that's on the line and you need everybody healthy. And they kind of have struggled um, in, in keeping people healthy and keeping all of his weapons on the, on the team. And Tannehill needs that help. I mean, he's good. I'm not saying he's not good, but, but those weapons make him even more of a threat. 
Um, and he didn't use his legs at, at all in the in the first half. But I will say this: that Tennessee team would not beat the Colts, and that nope. 49er team will not beat uh, anybody that ends with the word Bay. Yep. So I, agree. I mean, it was just not a. It was a good game, but. Um, uh, we were so close on the Devo Samuel thing. Like literally one yard line, his knee goes down and he it was a it. receiving t- touchdown pass or uh, it was, uh, a pass. A game of inches. A CD it was such a good call too screaming. because you had the right guy. And I oh. went under on his receptions because he had been trending in that direction. But whatever the game plan was for Tennessee last night, yeah. they were going to take George Kittle out of that game. They were. Yeah. And Garoppolo. Yeah, Garoppolo just, man. Well, I, he gave uh, the game Shannon, away. Sh- Shannon, yeah, Shannon. Let's be honest. Look. No, if they yeah. go up 17-0, yeah. it's over. It's game, yeah. set, match. It's yeah. 10 nothing when he threw the interception in the end zone. That's the ball game. Yeah. That's it. It's over. Um, yeah. You can't do that in the red zone. Uh, that That's where the game – and I had the Niners, and I'll live to fight another day with that play, but you can't tell me watch that first half. Yeah. They aren't the better team. Uh, I, I just – they gave that game away. That happens. Correct. It's football. Back to the prop plays, we got lucky with Tannehill staying under by a couple yards, although he was at 40 yards at halftime, literally yeah. 40 yards passing. Yep. So right idea, got the win, we'll take it. Debo under on the receptions, to my point here, Kittle was double and triple all night long. And so they were not going to let 85 beat him. And Debo did some things, and he's such a talent. They yeah. ran him like they always do, but now he got involved in the chase game where they were down and made some catches late. So, you know, you look at the game pragmatically, and if that interception doesn't happen, it's funny. If that thing goes seventeen nothing at the half, I, I think it's a completely different result. Yeah, I think I think uh, they're going to be looking at Garoppolo next uh, next year. They're going to um, be looking at Trey Lance. Is what they're yeah, going to be looking yeah, at. They're yeah, not going to be looking yeah, at Garoppolo. Yeah, yeah that's how's, what how's Jimmy G going to look in purple, you guys? Hey, oh, you know oh. what though? I don't mind that. <laughs> I, honestly, either him or Drew Locke. If they if they trade yeah. Cousins. And you're a Vikings fan. Those are the two guys you're likely going to have as a placekeeper. And then they're going to go out and they're going to draft somebody. Yeah. You know, we we talked a lot about some of the college quarterbacks that are out out there this year in the draft. Um, that is not a preposterous statement by Timmy. Uh, that that is likely where this is going. If if it isn't Cousins, look at Garoppolo. Look at Drew Locke. These are these are logical players to land in Minnesota. Well, I mean, I wouldn't mind looking at them every Sunday, but oh, I mean, I. <laughs> Oh, but I brother. think, but um, I think that uh, you know Trey Lance is, is such a talent. They know he's the future. Uh, they just got to be looking and considering what to do with with Garoppolo. And um, it's not that he's not talented, but he's just is not clutch. He's just not. Um, I don't. I, I don't know what happened last night. I just don't. And the week I before he got it done, and everybody was riding that train. And yep. and when I saw that last night and how it had happened and all the rest of it, I said, well, his his days in San Francisco are done. Not yeah, even yeah. numbered. They're just done. He's playing up the string at this point. And I just want to say one thing, going back to what you guys were talking about before, through this whole experience of, of watching the teams the way we have throughout the season, and, and I do put in some DFS plays that had Tennessee winning the game, but I didn't believe it. I didn't, I was really not either. committed to the bit. You know, no I didn't way. say they're going to do it. No team has been dipped in acid more times <laughs> this year than the Tennessee Titans and That's have amazing. lived to freaking tell. They are indestructible. And yeah. I will not count them out of any game that they're playing going forward just because somehow, some way, Mike Vrabel negotiates that team. And their defensive front, their their line and their linebackers taking away Kittle the way they did. Um, man, they just find them. and they're good, like you pointed out yesterday, Kevin. They're gonna get Derrick Henry back. That's, the, that's the key. So yeah. if they get him back, all bets are off. They can beat anybody, anybody in either conference. If Henry yep. is back and he's the player we saw in the first six weeks of the season, 100%. all bets are off. And yep. I have to see it to believe it because that was a very significant injury. But they have said that there is a decent chance if they make the playoffs, which they will now that yeah. he, he will be in that, that lineup again. And that changes everything because that makes Tannehill super dangerous when they put yeah. eight in the box and he's given one-on-one and you've got AJ Brown, that's you know, right. one-on-one situation. That is exactly what Tennessee wants and needs. So yeah, it's super intriguing it, of all the teams that are going to be in the playoffs. 
that's probably the scariest team because you don't know what they're going to have right now. Right. And they have the coach. I mean, that guy, as we talked about yesterday, you know, at some point, this guy is going to win a big one. He is. Yeah. He's, he's going to get his team to the big dance. I, I just, Timmy, to your point, the way they find ways to win, that is coaching. And he is oh. the man. Yep. They have they have navigated such a brutal schedule, and for them to be where they are, uh, if they if the Colts lose tomorrow, you know they, they I think Which they get the happen. division, <clears throat> right? Yeah. So I mean, they, yeah. that unbelievable what what they've been able to do. Uh, speaking of unbelievable, Jesse Pierce, Jesse Heinrichs uh, stepping in and, and saying, wishing us good things on this Christmas Eve. Merry Christmas to you, my dear. She wants to know about the Vikings. You gotta wait. You gotta wait. It's, it's coming. coming. We've got a strong opinion on that one. Yeah. <laughs> it's coming. Oh, yeah. Here we go. We have to think big em before we get on to our, our plays on oh, Saturday. I don't know. I don't and know I'm... if we need to. <laughs> oh, we need to. Instead of instead of figgy pie, I'm having humble pie today. No. Um, I, uh, yeah. Um, you know, Kittle Kittle was really good in the first half, and then they figured it out and locked him down. So um, yeah, it's just Brutal with Kittle last night. He, he's but. a Belichick disciple. What did he do? He took, he away, took away that their thing. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Although I'm so. surprised he didn't try to fake out Debo. I think Debo's the most dangerous player in San Francisco. Yeah. But he decided Kittle's not going to beat us, and someone else has to. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and he definitely did not. The other one was you, you touched on yeah, it a little bit earlier. You had Debo. Debo getting in the end zone. He, yeah. It's, it's a game inches. of inches. <laughs> I was literally jumping on my couch screaming. And then my husband goes, Oh, sweetie, um, his knee was down. Like, no. Oh, so frustrating. I know. So we got very close, but I I just I thought he was due for receiving T D and there you go. But uh didn't happen. But he still had a good game. I still got lots Great of game. points from him. Um and so um yeah, I mean it just was a game that shouldn't have been that way. Just did, did, did that get you in anything with the DFS last night? No, all of mine went down. And I had two with um, uh, starting the kickers, both kickers, too, in there. So still, still, barely, I, I just was like this close from right. the money, the money win, but um, it happens. It does. It does indeed. All right. We had one other game, uh, or two actually, uh, game, let's say, on the college level last night. <laughs> uh, we'll start with the Union Home Mortgage Gasparilla Bowl. Mm. And uh, man, that, that's a favorite for everybody, I'm sure. Uh, UCF looking for that signature win against the Florida Gators. Gators minus seven, over under 55. KG, your play was? Under quarterback issues for both. Total was 55 and a half, and uh, you never had to sweat this one. It was an under play. UCF gets the win. Nice win for those kids. Uh, taking down Big Brother, Florida, one of the big established SEC programs in the neighborhood. So good for those kids, and I'm glad it was low scoring. One other game, we had the Frisco Football Classic, which, of course, matched up <clears throat> Miami of Ohio of versus North Texas. Uh, Miami was uh, given a two and a half with an over-under 55. You like North Texas because this was really a pick against the entire MAC conference. I ripped yesterday. them and they, <laughs> they did me wrong. You know, I, I, I called out the MAC for having a bunch of six and six teams, which they do. Um, and after four or five consecutive losses uh, in bowl games, they got to win. And uh, good for them. I turned it on. It was 14-13 North Texas. They had the ball. And, again, I'm not, not glued to these games just play by play with these silly bowl games. But all of a sudden, I'm like, all right, well, it's 14-13. We got the ball. Kid throws the pick. They run it back to, like, the 20-yard line. Next thing I know, they're down 13. I'm like, well, that was fun. Um, <laughs> it was the first time I've watched North Texas, I think, in my life. So that, that I accomplished something. There you go. Yeah. And, and, and the Mac gets uh, off the carpet uh, for this one. Okay. So I'm going to be doing double duty on this. We're going to run through our picks for the weekend. I'm going to try to get your prop plays in to the graphics as I've been purging the different uh, graphics as we have uh, gone through these games. We have two games on Saturday. We were going to have the Hawaii Bowl tonight. Hawaii has backed out of that game. Um, it's, as you know, it's COVID. And, yep. and so they could not put a team together. They have backed out of their own uh, bowl. I hope that their opponents uh, still get the trip to Hawaii if they want that. Nice oh, way to there. end. Yeah, they're end there. The they're surfing. Yeah. Have a little bit of fun. Uh, no surfing tomorrow unless it's crowd surfing at Lambeau Field. Packers playing on Christmas Day. One of those games I am sure not to watch because I anticipate a 
Packer parade uh, into the end zone in this one tomorrow. Uh, I'm not the prognosticator, though. It's KG. So here we go. Saturday plays. Browns at Packers. Green Bay giving seven and a half over under 45. Yeah, let's not overthink this one, folks. It's Christmas. You know, you want to stuff that stocking full of cash, take the free money. Uh, the Browns in their last three games have scored 48 points. We're happy for Cleveland. Good job. In that same three-game span, Green Bay has scored 112 points. They want to be home for the playoffs. They control their destiny. They're laying just a little over a touchdown, seven and a half. They will win this game by double digits. How many times have we watched Aaron Rodgers and the Packers in cold weather matriculate the football? Take the Packers. Don't overthink it. They will cover the number. The other game on Saturday uh, has two teams who are like so many others striving to get into the playoffs and, and uh, where a loss could really damage uh, these teams. I mean, the cards, I think, are going to stagger their way in. I don't know that they win the, the, the West, uh, but uh, they've got the Colts coming in tomorrow night. Kind of a pick game. Cards uh, given a point with an over-under of 49. Yeah, we saw Arizona last year lose four of their last six and stumble down the stretch. They've now lost four of their last seven. So there are trends that are telling you this has happened and it's going to happen again. Colts are eight and three in their last 11 against the number. I think they've got the wrong team favored. I think the Colts are a better football team than Arizona, especially right now. Hopkins out, their best weapon. Uh, yeah, give me Jonathan Taylor against that rush defense. I mean, if you're you're doing daily fantasy on Saturday and you don't use Jonathan Taylor as your key guy. You're doing it wrong. He will run. <laughs> the Colts will score and we will cash with the blue and white of Indianapolis. So I, I think with the, the, the Colts, um, they really just, they need this, right. And they really want this, uh, this win for, for many reasons. And, and obviously the Cardinals just, they can't stay, they're just not consistent. And I, I just think Jonathan Taylor um, is going to probably be a huge factor in this. And and that's just, it might be a little contrary, but I, I just think he's not, if Belichick can't stop him, I mean, I just yeah. think it's a factor. Uh, that offensive line is special. I want yep. to pass along a comment we got from a, from a viewer. Not asking for a, a tip so much as uh, Karen Pearson work is saying, loves these discussions, especially Alexis, Alexis Pearson, because she's my granddaughter, but she knows oh. sports, especially hockey. You are all great. And KG, I know you have a special spot for Alexis. We call her my fourth daughter. You know, the three Gore girls, and I adopted her. I met her when she was just uh, getting through her time at St. Cloud State, and she wanted to go into broadcasting. We made a connection there. And it's lasted for just short of a decade now. She's worked with me out at Canterbury uh, selling my tip sheets. Um, she's a part of the Wild Broadcast now. She's doing her own thing with her podcast. She's immensely talented. She's a wonderful human being. And so pretty cool to have her grandma tuning in on Christmas Eve. So we love we love Miss Alexis, that's for sure. Calling women's hockey games now, you yeah, know, for the – for the uh, yeah, so – She's the real deal, man. Kids bright, got bright so much future. Talent. Yep. All right, uh, Lions at Falcons to our Sunday schedule. Mm. Falcons given six with an over-under of 45. And this is one of those games where I said this yesterday. If I, if I was to do this show, and I, and I don't, <laughs> for, for, good, for good reason too, I'd say, hey, Merry Christmas, everybody. Play the under. All the way across the board, just play the under. See you Monday. Merry Christmas. I mean, well, I, I don't know. How do these two teams get to 45? Well, they're bad teams, so they'll make mistakes, right? They'll be turnovers, and they can't stop anybody. I mean, hold on here. Atlanta There's that. Has, they've allowed 82 points in their last three games combined, so their defense is susceptible. The problem is going to be Detroit. We have a question mark at quarterback. Now, I'm not yes. saying in, in Jared Goff you're losing Tom Brady, but you are losing a starter if he doesn't play. He's a game-time decision. It doesn't matter because Swift is back. It looks like Swift is going to play, and, man, is he a guy that makes this offense go? Yep. He's a special, special talent. They've got some young players, guys. I mean, the Lions are bad. I'll give you that. But if they draft well the next couple of years, this is a team that could jump up in a hurry. Amon St. Brown is an excellent, yes. excellent wide receiver. Yep. And with Swift in the backfield, if you get a quarterback that can stay healthy, bottom line is they're getting six points, and I'm taking the points. I don't know how they're going to go over the total. I don't know how Detroit's going to contend. But I watched that YouTube video of uh, their coach on Twitter last week in the locker room after that game. Yeah. These guys are buying in. And in December yes. right now, 
with two teams that are going nowhere. Give me those Detroit guys. Give me that coach who's all sweaty. And he's got that T-shirt. He looks like he just came out of the bar. I mean, give me that guy. I want that guy. I'll take my six points, and I'll take my Lions. The yeah, I, never yeah, and and they they are believing in him, and it's good. And this is when you need that. You've had a horrible season, and now all of a sudden they're they're you know buying, as you said, KG buying into to what the coach is saying, and and they're starting to believe in in the team. Um, and <laughs> you know, Atlanta just is being Atlanta, and they just aren't being. I mean, a couple good players. Uh, and I, I just think that the Lions aren't aren't going away quietly. Uh, they're 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 ending this with a roar. They've defeated um, some good teams, uh, and uh, you know, in in teams that they should never have had a, a chance at at beating. So I don't know. And so I have Taysom Hill and Lamar Jackson. So I had to. The only person left was uh, Matt Ryan for my Ooh. quarter. Back. Mm, yeah, I know. Could be a worse matchup, though. I mean, you know, yeah, yeah you'll get some yeah. points. Yeah, I mean, so we'll he's see. got Cordero. I, Cordero. He's got I don't hate that. Yeah. No, he's got Gage. Gage. I, I think there will be points in this game. When you get to December yeah. and you look at this pragmatically, two teams that aren't really going anywhere, I think yeah. sometimes these games can shoot up because people aren't really focused on the defensive side of the ball. So I, I, I think Ryan can get you at least two. And if yeah. you can get at least two touchdowns out of your third string fantasy yeah. quarterback and your horses come to play, you'll be okay. Yeah. 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 All right. So, uh, and, and back to that Detroit's coach. I mean, yeah, he, he's, he's, he's denting the car. Like every time you see the car, he's running into things and everything, but man, he always brings it in and he drives it hard and fast. So there's uh, something to be Love said him. for the way this guy is motivating this team. Yeah. Uh, the bears playing at, at Seattle end of an era up in Seattle. I think, I think yes. most people do. Uh, yep. Whether Carroll comes back, whether Russell comes back, Seattle given six and a half in this mm-hmm. game, uh, and I missed the over under on that. My fault. The over under is forty three. It is forty three. Yeah, yeah. You know, the line right off right off the hop when I checked out this week's lines, I'm like, ooh, six and a half. And right away, I'm thinking, well, hold on. I mean, I, I, in my mind, I'm like, well, should I make a case for the Bears? And then I started to handicap it. Seahawks are getting healthy, uh, and then I think about even though their defense isn't what it used to be, the Legion of Boom. The 12s are the 12s. This place will be sold yep. out. It will be loud. And I just I have a hard time seeing Chicago consistently move the football right now. Their their wide receiver core is awful. I mean, it's just yep. I don't know. Whatever happened to Allen Robinson, you got to go to the grocery store and check those milk cartons because this guy used to be good. <laughs> I don't know where he's gone. He's just disappeared. Honestly. Yep. Vanished yep. into the night. I love David Montgomery. They have no help for him. He's a one man band back there. Yep. Fields, I think, with the noise, is gonna have a hard time controlling the offense, and the Seahawks have quietly uh, built a little momentum. So I'm going to lay the points. I I am a guy that looks to play the underdog, but I'm not here. I'm going to lay the points with Seattle. I think their defense makes at least one big play in this game, and I think they've got the weapons to make Chicago uh, look like they really are, which is what we saw last week, a bad team. And I would be looking for a prop play on Lockett if I were folks on this. He's back, um, and Wilson uh, just connects with him. Yeah, loves him. I have Metcalf uh, in one league, Lockett, and another Metcalf has done nothing, uh, and so right, and, and yeah. it's getting it's getting in his head um, about why he isn't there. It's he's starting to take it personal, I think. And I heard um, something about this, Carla, and, and uh, what I heard is this: um, teams watched the film of him in his rookie year, and all he would do is go over the top like Randy Moss and take him deep. He didn't have any real skill set at at running patterns underneath or back to the middle. And so they've double bracketed the deep stuff and they've forced him to be something he's not. And so far he has not adjusted. And that is on him because being a wide receiver, you can see the freaky talent this kid's got. He's built like a tank and he's fast, but if you can't run the right routes, I mean, I think a Chris Carter, you're a Viking fan. Remember what that guy could do to force himself open. This kid has not yet figured that out. And until he does, he's going to be who he is right now. Yep. Five catches, 62 yards, no touchdowns because teams are taking away the deep ball. Yep. They were on a nationally televised game before they played the Vikings. He had a catch in the first quarter and then didn't even have a look until the fourth quarter again, too. So is he not getting open or is, is something going on with him and Russ? I mean, something it just seems odd to me that you would have someone with that much talent. I mean, as a, as a, you know, as a coach, your job is to get the most out of your players. I, I, I find it unforgivable that you have a guy, we're having this discussion in week 16 about a guy yeah. with that kind of talent. 
I mean, something's gone really, really wrong in that situation. And I've done playing it because every week after week I go to DFS and go, this has to be the week. Lock is out. This has to be the week. I'm done. I'm nothing I, I don't mind you it. playing Lockett, but I'm not touching Metcalf. No. He's yeah. the only, Lockett's the only one that should be in a lineup, um, in my opinion, and um for this. And Penny's healthy, but no not gonna, Lockett's the not guy. Any. I completely yeah. agree. He's the one guy you want for sure. Yep. Washington football team playing at Dallas. They played just two weeks ago. And Dallas, uh, it was a weird game. Some points scored some goofy different ways. Um, Dallas is now qualified for the playoffs as a result of the game last <laughs> night. Does that change how they approach the game uh, this week? Or does it perhaps take pressure off? Because this is a team that just really has not been functioning with all the weapons they have. They just really have been sputtering. Are they hungry or are they starving? We'll find out. You know, uh, th 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 this is one of those games where – they might be feeling pretty comfortable. They're laying double digits. They just beat this team. It's a division game. Everything about this game that I know, handicapping a, a football game, leads me to the Washington football team and the points. They didn't play that badly. They got into a big hole early, made some big mistakes, and then they battled back two weeks ago and had a chance late in the game to tie it up. They're getting double digits. I'm not going to overthink it. They're starting to get healthy. Um, I think they need to use Gibson more. I think he's immensely talented. I think he's been underutilized in Washington. Um, he's a question mark this weekend, so keep that in mind. Um, it, it's one of those games where it's not really a play on Washington, Timmy. It's a play against Dallas because we know who this team is. They are not worthy of laying double digits, especially against the division rivals. So I'm going to take the underdog regardless of who lines up. I think Washington finds a way. Who's the quarterback for the – Have they? Uh, I know who the quarterback is. Have they announced who's starting is what I mean. Heineke's a game time decision, and if it's not him, it's it's some guy I've never Gilbert, heard of. Gilbert, who's eating Gilbert Grape. Gilbert yeah. Grape, and he was okay the other night. Actually. He was okay. Yeah. yeah, that's what that was where I was going. Is he, <laughs> um, you know, he he was de decent. I mean, he honestly, was okay. yeah, like I mean, he he could get the job done if you have your your uh, weapons uh, healthy and locked and loaded. Well, you know, it's nobody has a a book on somebody like that, you know, Grant Gilt, whatever his name is. Nobody knew him. He was on New England's practice squad. The, yeah. the Washington football team didn't even know him. But now teams do. They see him for a week. They see what Washington tried to do with them. It'll be difficult for him to try to replicate, you know, those same sort of numbers. But, again, I'll go back to the – well, Belichick was trying to stash him on the practice squad. He's got to have some sort of redeeming qualities, yeah. right? Exactly. So they, exactly. they saw something yep. in him. The game that affects a lot of us uh, here locally in Minnesota – uh, the Rams coming in uh, to play the Vikings. That line has had a little bit of a movement today. It's gone from three to three and a half on the news that Dalvin Cook has uh, gone into the COVID protocol. He is unvaccinated. <laughs> he will not play. May be back for the Packers game. But that line has now slid to three and a half. Yeah, there's not a more valuable backup in football than Alexander Madison and more capable. Yeah. You know, when that news came out, I'm like, well, that doesn't change anything for me. I mean, mm -hmm. Dalvin Cook is awesome. Mm -hmm. Madison can do almost the same thing, and it forces Cousins to, to get – you know, J.J. and some of these weapons more involved in the passing game. Here's what I know about this game. You won't have a better setup as, as a Vikings team with what the Rams went through last week in a meat grinder game against Seattle on Tuesday, traveling across the country on short rest with barely any time to game plan for this one. And now you're the Vikings, and yeah, you played on Monday. I get it. You played the Bears. You led the whole way. You were pretty much in control of that game to the buzzer. And now you have a fresh running back. You're at home where Mike Zimmer has covered his last four as a home dog. He's something like 14 and four mm -hmm. in his career as a home underdog. And you're getting more than a field goal with the team that figures to be more desperate. I mean, the Vikings know they're going to Green Bay the following week, and they know they're not winning that game. We all know that. This is your chance right now. If you want to be a playoff team, this is it. You are going to get an absolute primo effort out of the Vikings here. Yep. And I say this as a handicapper, not a Viking fan. You know me well enough. Yep. Vikings will win this game. I will take the three and a half. It's my strongest opinion on the NFL slate this weekend. I love the Vikings in this spot. <laughs> I uh, I couldn't. I, I'm maybe not as optimistic as KG. I should be, but you know, lifelong Vikings fan. Um, I I couldn't agree more. You're going to get a resilient effort from them. They, this is it. This is it. This is gonna. Uh, this is gonna be who they who we think they are if they. <laughs> They if want to they, be a playoff team. They got to yeah, win this game. They got to win this. And Period. so, end of story. Yep. And so, and Thielen is, I still think, a game time decision, but will be a factor if he is playing, even if he's on a limited snap count. You've got to account for him 
Um, even if he's used as a decoy, um, you've got to account for him. Well, think what he can do too. Even if he is limited, yeah. as long as yeah. you're not putting him at risk, I don't want to put it right anybody at risk here. But right. let's say he's 80 percent, Timmy, and you can run those little six yard to eight yard button hook plays where he's such a possession guy. They have got to account for him, which is going to open up the field for JJ and Conklin and KJ Osborne. It's going to open that thing up. But the key to the whole thing is, it's not easy to run the football on the Rams. They have a great front. You've got to get Madison going, whether it's quick passes or quick hitters or play acts. You've got to get him going early in this game. You've got to run the ball against the Rams to keep them honest. And I think this is a great spot. Short rest for the visitors. Great numbers on, on Zimmer's behalf as a home dog. This is it. All the chips are on the table. Here we go. It's an interesting side story that was in the <laughs> Minneapolis paper today, too. Talk about the personal relationship of Justin Jefferson to, to um, OBJ and, and to um, Ramsey, and that this is a big deal to him to play this game. Oh, yeah. So I think he's going to go into this game sort of doing what most receivers do. We haven't heard that he does this, but I want the ball. You know, yep. I want the ball. So I think Jefferson's going to be a little motivated too. Um, yeah, really interesting game. And the last thing I'll say about this is Stafford, I mean, he's been so good this whole season, but he's had those just moments, those games where you just go, WTF, you know, what right. is he doing? And we know he's had some very, very long afternoons at both the Metrodome and now at U.S. Bank Stadium uh, when he was with the Lions and, and man, been bound the carpet 10, 11 times. Um, what a game Wanham had last week. I mean, the Vikings have to find a way to get pressure and to keep pressure off of Kirk Cousins. This game is, we say it every week, this is it for the Vikings. <clears throat> Lose yep. this game and they're done. Yep, that's where we're at. Yep. Almost as important, Jaguars at Jets. <laughs> you got the, the Jags and the Jets. Jets yeah. favored. One, and a half, one point favor over under 42. Yeah, the Jags are playing great football, aren't they? Their last three games, they lost by 14, 20, and 30. They have packed it in. Um, if you're going to play a, a Jaguar in DFS, James Robinson is the guy you want because there is not a more pathetic fantasy defense against the rush than the Jets. But, but the Jets are at home. The Jets are starting to get healthy. Michael Carter now, second week back after his long injury. I think he's immensely talented. This Michael Carter yes. kid is going to yep. be a player. Uh, yep. Keep an eye on him this weekend. I think he might ball out a little bit. And I think the Jets are going to find a way. Um, it's it's one of those games where, hey, it's on the slate. It's Jacksonville getting less than a field goal on the road. Out of principle, you have to play the Jets. This Jacksonville team, <laughs> it's December. They don't care. Their quarterback has been awful. Their coach is gone. And we only have to lay a point. So the Jets just have to win a home game against Jacksonville. Again, sometimes in, in, in gaming, don't overthink it. Play the game and move on. Is that a yes, please? Yes, please. <laughs> Any NFL team, I'm, I'm going to say this right now. If Jacksonville's playing a road game and they're only getting one point, I'm going to sign up for the home team 100 out of 100 times. This is a play against Jacksonville, and I'm never going to have to worry about it because the Jets will find a way. Yeah. And the, right. Jets, the Jets need the draft uh, around Michael Carter. They do. So. Build around that. Yep. Uh, Bills and Patriots rematch of a game Ooh. we were all so intrigued with weeks ago. It was a Monday night game and huge wind. And and, and then the Bills just rolled out this triple head, the, the Patriots, this triple headed monster, and just ran the Bills up and down the field. Here we go with the rematch in Foxborough. Pats, two and a half point favorites, over under 44. Do you think Belichick's in their head a little bit after what he did last time? <laughs> Here's how I'm going to beat you. We're going to throw it three times in the entire game, in an NFL football game, and we're going to win in your stadium. And now you're coming to our stadium. And, oh, by the way, the last three home games for the Patriots, they've outscored their opponents 135 to 33. I love the Bills, and I love Josh Allen. If you look at this team and you're honest, the last month, they're going the wrong way. And I'm not going to let a win at home against Carolina last week, who stinks. Fool me. New England will win the game. Yep. New England will cover the spread. Bill Belichick, December football with a lot of chips on the table. I, that's all I have to say. This is uh, this is a no-brainer. The the one thing I would tell you, tell folks watching, uh, look at a prop play for Hunter Henry, and I'm going to tell you why. Last week mm. against Indy on the road against Indianapolis Colts, who by the way are like my new favorite team in the playoff coming up. Um, six receptions, eight targets, 77 yards. 
and two touchdowns. So um, I would get a little animated there. Yeah, careful you know, with your my, my, Watch out. <laughs> um, and and I think if you're looking at some prop plays, look at look at Hunter Henry. He's a touchdown machine. I love that yep. tout. You, you know, I, early in the year we were doing the show, I had that. And then last weekend when I was doing all the different prop plays for their last game, he was like the only player for the Pats I didn't work in. So, of course, I'm like, sure, now you get off the Hunter Henry. <laughs> and so it's, it's interesting to me watching and from a DFS perspective. You have Henry, you have Gronk this weekend. Andrew showed last weekend. You can't not have Mark Andrews in there somewhere because right. he go, they go every play right. and he delivers – Travis Kelsey, Dallas Goddard. I mean, the, the, the tight end position right now is, is a flex play in DFS because there's just too many good ones out there. For yeah, sure. there's some big ones. And, you know, touchdowns matter so much in DFS. People overthink it sometimes by looking for volume. But if you don't have a guy that can get to the paint, you're going to have a hard time keeping up with the top scores every week. So Hunter Henry's a guy that has eight touchdowns on the year. He had two last week. That's the guy you want. Mark Andrews is a touchdown machine. So that's kind of the, the nuts and bolts of if you're going to use him as a flex, if you're going to go double tights, find guys that find the end zone. And, and this is one of those guys. And one what? other thing is the running backs are in are, are questionable and, and his receiving core is a little bit beat up. So just just throwing that out. No, no, you're, you're absolutely right about that. The, the receiving core, especially, we don't know. Ramondre Stevenson sick this week but they said it wasn't COVID but just an illness so does he go um where is you know the lead back with the hamstring is is he going to be back and ready to go I think he'll so be back I do yeah we I don't know yeah we don't know for sure and in the red zone they love doing play action to, to Hunter Henry so there's a lot and, of reasons to like that tight end uh Broncos and Raiders uh in Las Vegas uh, Denver minus one over under 41 and a half Really surprised by this over-under. When they played last time, they scored 58 points. It was just about, uh, well, it was October, but a couple months ago. And then last year, they played a late-season game in January, and Vegas won that game 32-31. to 31. So there's the potential here for a lot of points. Again, late in the season, two teams that likely will not be a playoff team. And even though it's a divisional game, I think you're going to see some fireworks here. I think you're going to see some, some big play capabilities. You know the weather's going to be good in Las Vegas in that climate control. So, yeah, I'm all about the over here. I think it's a super manageable number. And, yeah, there's some good players on both defenses. Maybe you get a defensive turnover in the red zone and you get a, a short field. I, I just I have a hard time seeing this game not going over the total. I, I really like uh, Drew Locke being the quarterback for Denver, too, because he takes chances, he'll throw the deep ball, and he'll also throw interceptions, and those lead to points. So I, I like the over a lot here. And <laughs> true to form with the tight end, um, uh, Fant, Fant, no, Fant, 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 Fant um, is is a good prop play uh, to to study a little bit because the Raiders think at uh, yeah. against the tight end. All right, so we are through the game plays. We are to prop plays, and I've managed to get a couple of them loaded here. So here we go. Your first one. We didn't talk about it. The Chargers uh, playing uh, this week. They are uh, on the road, uh, and you like Justin Herbert. I love the air bear. He's one of my favorite players in the league. He's only got to get you to two touchdown passes. He needs to go over one and a half. The game script worries me because they're a double digit favorite, but they're on the road and they're, they're not going to want to lay back, especially early in the first couple of quarters into the third. I think he gets there. I think he's got the weapons to do it. You've got Keenan Allen. You've got Mikey Williams. You've got this Guyton guy that's starting to really jump up um, and no Eckler. You know, Eckler right. is doubtful for this game. So that is really, I think, going to push the envelope in the direction of, of Air Bear. I love over one and a half TDs for him. And he likes Justin Jackson. And Justin Jackson had um, 86 yards last week and um, I think was averaging over six yards. A, a, you yeah, know, and a they match. should be able to score at will against this yep. team. Houston is yep. so bad. I mean, they're, they're just horrible. so Worst bad. in the league. Worst in the league against yeah. uh, the rush. And the, and the Chargers have to win. I mean, it's yes, motivated. They do. It's not. It's they, not. They they have it's to. not. They're just not. They just can't show up. Right. Okay. Um. Next one. Uh, Cincinnati in a game we didn't talk about either. Cincinnati at Baltimore, sort of in a, a death match for, for one of these two teams. Uh, Cincinnati's going to need some uh, production. And and you like Jamar Chase because uh, Baltimore good against the run, not so good against the pass. Their secondary has been tough all year. They've struggled, and top receivers have really had a, a feasting against Baltimore. And the games have been high scoring. We saw it again last week. We saw it when the Vikings played Baltimore. And because 
Higgins and Boyd have really jumped up. And Chase has got a bad month of football. After looking like a lock to be the rookie of the year, he slowed down a little bit. This is the week it all gets corrected. This is the week we come back to number one and Chase gets fed this weekend. I, four and a half catches is nothing for this kid. I, I am definitely going to use him in my daily fantasy, and I think it's going to be a high-scoring game. So I will take Chase over four and a half. Love it. Uh, Green Bay at home tomorrow. We know that against the Cleveland Browns. Uh, Devontae Adams, you've got him going uh, for the touchdown. And I think this one, I don't think this one, I, th- I think Green, uh, Aaron Rodgers, as we know he does, is going to play to the cameras. <laughs> He's on his own personal campaign to win the MVP award. He's going to run it up tomorrow. And if he's able to run it up and and they're able to score at least three touchdowns, how is this guy not going to score? I I don't care. Pick your defense. He in the red zone is such a weapon because you can put two, three guys on him and he runs that little slant and he has such good chemistry with Rodgers. It's in his hands before he's even turned. So yeah, give me the touchdown for Devontae Adams. If I'm going to play the Packers and lay the points, I do think that they're going to have uh, the chance to get three, four touchdowns along the way, and he'll have at least one of them. Yep, love it. Agreed. I would just throw a DFS play. <laughs> you threw it a couple guys to look out for this weekend. Lazard is back. Scantling, yep. whatever, is out with COVID. So Lazard will be that number two, and he was the two before he went yep. down. So and no I, Cobb. I would... Yeah, no Cobb. Yeah, yeah. No MVS. Um, and Devontae's going to get plenty of attention. So if you like, uh, if you like the lizard at a at a value number. I think he's a sneaky play. That's a good tout. And uh, finally, back to the Bills and the, um, uh, the the Patriots. This is one where we know Belichick likes to take away your number one weapon. Plus, there's another guy who quietly has risen through the ranks for the uh, receiving uh, ranks for the Bills. Another sneaky DFS play this weekend. Gabriel Davis, get to know him. He is a uh, very playable guy in DFS, and you know Belichick. I mean, there is no running game there. It's Josh Allen None. and Stephon Diggs. That is where the Patriots' focus will be. If Diggs is going to get there, he's going to have to work real hard to do it. This is going to be one of those pack of lunch type of games for Diggs, where he's going to have to work his way through a lot of traffic. He's going to be frustrated. I, I yeah, this one I, I know it's hard because he averages sixty nine yards a game on the low end. I mean, on his bad games, he's had one hundred and fifty yards a couple different times this year. So it's it's a contrarian play but it's a Belichick play and it ties into our play on the game. And a lot of times with these uh, type of plays, I like to have a narrative there. Sorry. We've got the mom coming home and now the dogs are really excited because dinner is coming. For lunch. I know <laughs> it's going to get loud in here. Well, it's about to get loud in here because uh, that's it. We have, that's we've it. gone almost 15 minutes awesome. over, but we're kind of snapping, you know, just fit in Saturday and Sunday. We are not yes. going to be live tomorrow. We're not going to be live on Sunday. Right. Uh, we're coming back Monday morning, KG. Monday morning. I hope I'll be in Winnipeg. That's where I'm scheduled to be. So that's the plan. And and it still works with you to do this, even though you'll be on the road. If oh, yeah. Hopefully on the road. Yeah, absolutely. Well, okay. I think at the NHL, well, my guess is you're going to be sitting right where you are right now, but I don't know that, where you want to be, and I hope it happens for you for that sense. Yeah, uh, it hasn't been postponed yet, so we we believe we'll be in Winnipeg on Monday, and that's the plan as of now, and I hope it, it actually comes to fruition. Sorry about the barking. That's a good way to close the holiday show. <laughs> the dogs are telling us it's just time to go and celebrate Christmas. Thank you to you both Thank very you. much. Merry Christmas, guys. Merry Christmas. Yeah, Merry Christmas. Best of luck to all of you. We hope that all of your plays come in as winners. Merry Christmas to all. Stay safe. Have a great weekend, and we'll hope to see you right back here Monday morning on the one and only It's Gordon.